again everybody, yes we're here in Adobe Photoshop CS6, it's so exciting, it might not be exciting if you're watching this in a couple of years time, but at the moment, in early 2012, this is quite an exciting moment, Adobe Photoshop CS6, we're going to look at some skin softening techniques, which you can do in CS6, so let's get stuck in straight away, uh, I've renamed this uh, background layer as a mono portrait, I'm going to copy it, I'm going to just drag it down there, and uh, I'm going to rename it as Blur, you can always do Command J on the Mac or Control J on the PC to do the same thing, and then just click re, uh, rename it. And we're going to add some blur in it. It's good old Gaussian, Gaussian, call it what you want in Gaussian blur. I'm going to take it up to 5.3. You see there, we're just seeing a blurred layer, so I'm going to cancel that and just go in and we'll change the blend mode first. So change the blend mode either soft light, hard light, but we'll look at overlay first of all. You see that pops the contrast up, really does. Uh, but we want to blur that layer. And let's go back into Gaussian Blur. Yes, Gaussian. And just fiddle around with that slider. It's all to taste. Click OK on that. And you get straight away, within a very short period of time, a reasonably soft, blurred skin effect. Trouble is, though, it's blurring absolutely everything. So we're getting blurred hair and everything. We can take the opacity down, bring it up, make it look interesting and not too overpowering. Um, it's OK. Not great. There's a lot more we can do. So we use the filter, Gaussian Blur on a duplicate layer in Overlay Blend Mode. Let's just bin that layer. Because I'm going to show you quite a few things here in this little quick tutorial. I'm going to copy it again, so it's Command-J, Control-J. not going to bother renaming it this time, you know how to rename things. But I am going to convert it to a Smart Om section. So just click in there and you'll get your contextual box coming up. You'll see a little dinky little thing in the bottom corner of your image and I'm going to change it to overlay blend mode now I'm going to go in and I'm going to put Gaussian blur in it again and you can see there we get a really nice effects you can play with the slider again fiddle around as soon as you click OK you see what happens here we get uh, a mask uh, we've got the opacity player in there of course we have the mask in there which click on and off which is masking the uh, smart filters if it was a black one uh, we have the Gaussian blur itself which we can call up again and play around with so it's editable. Uh, your blur effect on this layer is editable. Uh, so you've got so much more flexibility and we'll exploit that now. So we could always work on this um, smart filter masking area. Uh, just got to make sure if you click on it to make sure there's white bounding boxes around the outside. We'll choose a brush. Uh, black as a foreground color. Nice. Just 30% as usual. Um, just make sure the eye icon is switched on next to it or else we can't do anything with it. I'm just going to increase the size of my brush, so it just makes the eye, the bounding box around the outside, and we're going to paint onto that mask and reduce some of the smart filter Gaussian blur effect on this image. So we're blurring the filter effect at this point in time. And I'm taking some of that out from the hair, so I put some detail back in the hair, just painting around. One of the most exciting things you can see on the internet, of course, is somebody painting in Photoshop. So I'm going to keep it short and sweet. Uh, that's what it looks like, well, like one of my uh, classic paintings from the past. Uh, but we've also got the overlay of blend uh, layer at the top here. And we can do things with this as well. Uh, so we've done things with the smart layer, we've done things with the Gaussian blur. Let's see what we can do with the uh, duplicate layer that's in overlay blend mode. You see there we've got it in overlay. I'm just going to call up a mask on that, so it's just a simple little white mask. I've got my black brush again. So this time, what I'm doing, I'm painting out the overlay blend mode. So don't get confused between the two. You have the Gaussian blur effect with the smart filter, but the layer itself is applying an overlay blend mode as well. So you've got two masks. See that? You've got flexibility with your mask in here. Uh, and of course, we can play around with this, we can paint more on it, uh, we change it into a smart object of course, and we paint it on the mask, and we paint it on the smart filter mask, and we've fine-tuned our work on it. So let's do something else. Um, just going to bin these, so just get rid of those again, I'm just leaving these boxes on for the moment. Back to the beginning again, uh, you know what to do now, Control J, Command J, uh, or just drag it down there onto the layer icon. Uh, straight away this time I'm going to turn it into the overlay blend mode. Um, Gaussian Blur. Simple as that, just like we did the first time around. Uh, and this time, do something slightly different. And uh, I'm going to double click there in that blued out layer. This will bring up this little box of tricks here, which is the layer style box. Uh, we're really going to look at the blend if bit at the bottom, because I want to knock some pixels out. You see, if I drag that slide along there, 
that's knocking out black pixels. And if we Alt or Option click on that uh, little doohickey down there, it'll split the sliders and we can slide around. That's right, sliding about with those sliders. We can get a nice gradation of uh, pixel removal there. So we've knocked out all that overlay uh, Gaussian blur blending. And if you see there, we just re uh, click on the icon by the mono portrait. That's all that's in the top layer. So it's just some of the lighter tones in there. We've now got in CA6, we've got this little icon here which shows that we're actually working the layer style box. It's got a sticky memory, of course. So we can then go back in and fine tune it again. Uh, drag it about, of course. And let's just click that on. So we've got our flexibility uh, with this of just knocking out pixels. You're not painting at all, you're just dragging one little slider backwards and forwards. And don't forget, of course, opacity. Uh, fine tune your work with the opacity slider, drag it up and down. It's entirely up to you what you do on this. I'm not going to quote any figures for you. Uh, and oh, let's get rid of that one. What I wanted to do was to bring a mask on it. So let's click layer mask on. Because you can help this along a bit as well. You can actually, with a black uh, foreground color paint brush, 30% just again tidy up in that hair as well uh, leaving the uh, face features alone of course uh, so you can do that as well uh, lots of flexibility again uh, I'm whizzing on I know <laughs> just replay this and go through these again and I'm going into the channels and this is just a very simple grayscale conversion so there's nothing to uh, no RGB in there just a grayscale uh, but what I want to do is use the luminosity and so we just down hold down the uh, control or the command key and click on there that Photoshop itself selects the luminosity in this channel now we can use this channel information let's go back into the layers menu uh, control J command J, J on a Mac and that will give you a uh, new layer which is the selection you made in the channel I know it just <laughs> it sounds like double dutch at times but if we put the blend mode on that and then put some blur over the top of it Gaussian blur again we're just blurring what Photoshop selected for us in the grey channel, which was the luminosity. So we're not really affecting the hair at all, we're just playing with the skin tones. Difficult to see, let's just click on that, uh, click off that, sorry. You can see there it's not really showing up very well what we're doing. Uh, I'm going to turn it back to normal, uh, open a new layer underneath, and I'm going to fill that alt backspace with black. And you can see there, there is some of the face skin tone detail. Uh, which we selected by uh, control clicking, command clicking in the channel. So we've used Photoshop to decide uh, for us what it's selecting. Let's just get rid of that again, switch that back on again, and I'm going to turn this back into uh, overlay blend mode. So drop down menu, overlay again. Uh, and again, opacity. Don't forget, it's not just finished there. You've got, you can go in again, and you can take that opacity slider up and down, fine tune the whole thing. Uh, you can also put a mask on here as well to help things along. I notice it's a bit sort of light at the sides there because of the luminosity values. Uh, black brush again, painting on a white mask, black to conceal, white to reveal. So we paint with black over the white mask and that'll just hide that luminosity uh, around the sides there and just concentrate things on the face. You see there, it's very subtle. Uh, there's ways of improving that. Um, what we can do uh, with this, let's just... Uh, sort the mouse out. Um, if you really want to increase the effect of this, Control J, Command J again, make sure it's an overlay, and you can put another layer over the top. Don't forget, you've got that opacity again. So if you really want to work on the skin, you can have multiple layers building up over the top. Just con uh, Control J, Command J, uh, and it'll look really good. Okay, so those have been some really quick methods uh, we've gone through. Uh, working on the hair, keeping the hair detail, but softening the skin, trying to keep some of that skin detail in there, not making it look too plasticky. Um, I hope this has been informative. Uh, just again, if some of it didn't make sense, just rewind it, have a cup of coffee and some biscuits, uh, and play through it again. Uh, until the next time, of course, uh, that's uh, bye for now.